All right, YouTube, David Harry here. Now in this video, I'm going to be answering a very specific question. And that is, is the Tech Zone X1 condenser microphone just a rip off one of these cheap Chinese clones, which are basically the same as a BM700 or BM800? those types of mics where you see zillions of variations of them on like Amazon and eBay and stuff. So is the X1 really just one of these in disguise? Now, the reason why I'm asking this question is because I've actually seen this question asked around the internet or it being suggested that this is basically the same as this. So what I'm going to do now is tip the camera over and let's reveal some pretty astonishing things and also a very positive conclusion to the end of the video. So before I get into showing the similarities between this X2 and the BM800, first of all, a massive difference, and that is this BM800 cost me seven pounds when I bought it on amazon.co.uk, and that included the suspension cradle, a cable, and also a foam filter. Now, to be honest, I actually bought it because of the foam filter, because the foam filter also fits on a Rode NT1A, so, for me, I was paying £7 for a filter for an NT18, which was cheap. <laughs> and also, right now on Amazon Co. UK, there's been a slight price reduction on the X2. It now costs £250 on Amazon Co. UK. So as you can see there, there are huge differences. Plus also, if you have a little shop around on Amazon Co. UK at the moment, you're going to see BM800s for less than £10. And I'm fairly sure around the world, you're going to get similar types of price marginal differences between them and stuff like that. Anyways, let me now get on to the similarities. And first off has got to be the suspension cradles. These suspension cradles are the exact same design. There's no two ways about it, both the exact same design. However, I would say that the black one here, which is the one off the X2, this is actually slightly heavier. So it may well be made with slightly better materials, but nonetheless, the overall design is identical. So straight away, you're probably gonna start saying to yourself, hold on, I've just bought a premium microphone, but is that really a premium suspension cradle? Immediately right now, I would have to say, no, it isn't. So yeah, that's a little bit of a worrying similarity straight away. So let me just get those out of the way. Now, let's get into the meat of this. And the first one here is really shocking. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start dismantling both of the microphones. Now they might wobble about a little bit on the table. I might hit the camera doing so and stuff, but just bear with me on this. Anyway, so BM800 there. Now the bottom here comes off, so let me just unscrew that. So there we go. So that piece there comes off. I will eventually get to the insides of both of the microphones and stuff like that, but for now, let me just get on with this bit. Hopefully the mic doesn't roll off the table. Now what I'm gonna do here is unscrew the bottom of the X2 as well, and look at that, that comes off, and it looks very similar, doesn't it? Well, it's not that it looks very similar, it is actually identical as far as the fitting is concerned, because if I take the bottom here off the BM800, look at this, hold on, boom, there we go. We've now got the bottom of the BM800 onto the X2, perfect fit. And obviously by virtue, the same thing will happen the other way around. The bottom of the X2 goes onto the BM800, look at that. Now I do have to say immediately though, if I take that off there and if I take this off here, hold on, give us a second. Let me just say if there's any difference in weight here. I mean, I'm not measuring these in any kind of like, you know, meaningful way. But if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that the one off the X2, the base off the X2 is a bit heavier. It does definitely feel that. Also on the inside, it's a little bit different. The thread is deeper on the X2 than what it is on the BM800. But as we've just seen, they both fit one another. Now, here's another thing here. Do the bodies often fit? 
Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to blur the picture because I don't want to show you the insides just yet. So whilst I blur the picture, it's only to stop you from seeing the insides. I'm going to get to it, but now what I'm going to do here is take the body off and replace the bodies over. So let me do this quickly. Hold on. Try and do it in such a way that nothing falls off the table, which would be a good idea. And let me see. Hold on. Okay, give us a second. I will unblur shortly. Let me just get this one on here. Oh, what's going on, David? There we go. Now, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> so there is the X2 with the body of the BM800. And then there's the BM800 with the body of the X2. Now, obviously, if that's gone on that like that there, we now know this will also go on the bottom. So that's the base and the body of the X2. Sorry, off the BM800, now with the X2. Now, if I just unscrew the base there as well, we can obviously see, yeah, look, you know, we, well, we know it's going to happen now because th at this point, this is a bit like Lego. So there we go. Look at that. Now, don't get me wrong. There's actually one potentially cool thing about this. This means that you can modify your X2. So if you want yourself like a pink or a blue or a red or whatever X2, then yes, you can do all this mixing and matching. But wait, YouTube, there's more mixing and matching to be had here. So let me just show you something else, okay? Because you're probably saying to yourself, hold on, Dave, if all the bodies and stuff are oh, with there, oh, I've just blared something, I had to blare it because I I prematurely showed you something that I wasn't supposed to show you. Hold on, wait there. There we go. I did a premature reveal. <laughs> okay, so anyways, yeah, where we're up to so far, we're seeing this as a bit like Lego. It's a bit mix and match. And the plus point is, is that you can actually modify your X2 with cheap components if you want to and have like a really cool, weird look of microphone, pink, blue, red, silver, whatever. Anyways, what I'm going to do now is just get out my little screwdriver here because let's see if we can change the tops of the microphones as well. Now what I'm gonna do, this might take a bit longer so I will blare it and I will speed through it as well. Okay, so what you are now looking at is the X2 with its own body on, but it has now got the grill of that BM800. Now, just something really quick here as well, and this is something that I may actually test in another video. But what it is, this particular grill system, or the top of this particular BM800, has also got its own, like, you know, foam filter built into it as well. So that's gonna offer a bit more wind protection if you're close miking. So I'm actually gonna try this out in another video. But as we can see right there, that is the X2 with a completely different top on it, same body. Now, obviously I could swap the body off the other one because that base bit there and then that body bit there will definitely go on there as well. So we could actually swap the entire thing over. I won't get into doing that because we now know that it will work. However, we've seen the last part of the puzzle here being the top piece does actually fit and it could fit and be cool because of the extra foam filter built inside this particular one. Anyways, now what I'm going to do is let's get right down to the business end here because if so far you've been thinking to yourself, wow, really, this X2 is just a cheap Chinese ripoff. Well, no, it's not. And here is where the differences are now. So let me just pop some of this stuff out of the way. Now, right, I've just blared for a second. Let me just speed up while I dismantle this again. Okay, so here are now both of the microphones completely disassembled. And what I'm going to do is just quickly show you the BM800 first. Now, if we have a look here, that capsule there, I suspect, is not a true condenser. What it is, there's two types of condensers. There's a full condenser, as it were, which is one that has to be externally biased. So basically, it becomes polarized through an external voltage. But there's an ECM capsule, which is still a condenser, but that has a permanently polarized element inside the capsule. I believe that this is an ECM. And the reason why I say that is because this microphone is supposedly designed to run from plug-in voltages. And if that is the case, it has to be an ECM because there is no way that the electronic circuitry here is for stepping up one, one and a half to five volts up to 48. However, 
what this circuitry is for here i suspect is to drop 48 down to five volts or anywhere between one and a half to five volts so that's why i'm surmising that that's an ecm okay doesn't mean to say it's going to be terrible or anything because there are really good ecm microphones out there in fact the microphone that i'm on right now i suspect this also has an ecm and not a true condenser and this is an expensive like 300 to 400 pounds sennheiser microphone so you can get great ec However, if we have a real cl close look <laughs> at the body here, the PCB and the electronics on it, you know, that really, I think, is just a voltage regulator or basically a voltage converter to go from 48 down to somewhere like 5 on the DC voltage. That would come in through the, the XLR for phantom power. Now, I'm, again, I am not saying there's anything wrong with this microphone, but it does obviously show that it is a, it is a cheap microphone. Now, I don't have to be an electronics expert or an expert in building capsules for microphones to know <laughs> that this one here is a completely different kind of fish. So as we can see there, just looking at the, the PCB there and all the components on that board, you know, that's a ton of stuff going on now. There's two boards there with a ton of different components on. Now, we're not going to be able to see, I don't think, but no, I don't think I'll get it. But actually, on the underside of both of those boards, there's more components as well. Now, I am not an electronics person, but on here, there'll be all kinds of stuff. There'll be things to do with the voltage regulating and stuff like that. Also, as well, the voltage for the actual capsule and the coupling of DC voltages. There's also going to be some kind of cleaning circuitry in there as well, probably for the voltages and stuff. There will be circuitry for balancing. There's also going to be amplification circuitry. There might even be some form of, like, you know, tone smoothing or tone control in there. But as we can see... <laughs> <laughs> there's a huge difference between those two circuit boards but where the massive difference is going to be is the capsule itself now this here i'm going to say is a gold spluttered capsule um by all accounts these are hand built as well and i don't doubt it you know the prob probably the, the the last part of the manufacturing process probably is hand building here um, so there's nothing like you know cheap looking about that capsule here and that is a true condenser capsule as well because obviously a lot of this circuitry here is to do with polarizing the, the, the plate on the capsule there okay so yeah there we go straight off bat as soon as the pair of them are opened up we can see there are huge differences now, just to summarize here with this particular video, I think it's quite possibly um, a little bit disconcerting when you consider that the X2 is using off-the-shelf parts as well, which are used by very cheap microphones. Because as you can see here, the actual, you know, the chassis, the chassis is identical, and the chassis has to be identical size-wise and fitting-wise in order for all those bodies to be interchangeable. Now, for cheap microphones or cheap-built microphones, I wouldn't say that that was a problem, or I wouldn't say it was a problem for enthusiasts as well, because there are people out there who buy these particular bodies, because a lot of this stuff you can buy with them not being a built microphone. So there's a lot of enthusiasts out there who build their own microphones, and they will indeed take a really good capsule off like you know a famous microphone should we say and then match it in with their own like you know bespoke circuitry and stuff but they will use th this exact body to do that and obviously a lot of the same casing and stuff like that so whilst i think that's all good for people like enthusiasts wanting to build their own microphones because it's readily available parts and you know it does look neat it does look nice well i'll give it that um when you're buying a microphone for £250 and then there's one for £7 and the bodies are identical and stuff like that, it definitely doesn't fill you with confidence. So, yeah, you know, I would say that that's a criticism, from me anyway, it's a criticism of the X2. Or basically, you know, it's, you know, tech zone. I think they could have, like, gone out the way a bit more to have built a bespoke body system for their microphone here. However, saying that... You know, because in, in America, this microphone is like, you know, quite often you'll get it for $180, the X2. Now, I would say 
anywhere in the world where you're getting it for a good price like in North America for 180 quid it's generally two sorry 180 dollars it's generally 200 dollars but I've seen it go as low as 180 dollars at that price I don't think you're going to be moaning if the company have used an off-the-shelf body system to create a nice microphone because don't forget if this was a bespoke body system and stuff it would definitely put the price up so in parts of the world like North America where you're kind of like you're benefiting from a really good exchange rate or whatever or you're just getting better prices for, for this product full stop it would definitely cost more if it had a bespoke body system anyways yeah I think I've covered as much as I need to cover here and all the rest of it and shown you um, yes there are definite massive similarities but at the end of the day the X2 is definitely a proper fully fledged condenser microphone and the bm800 here just like every other bm800 is definitely not an x2 okay <laughs> all right so if you've liked the video please give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing to my channel getting all over that bell notification icon in the process i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now